hey hey y'all welcome 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 to my channel it's your girl anisa the spiritual mermaid okay also known as your silhouettes thank you so much for being here thank you guys for all of your support all the shares the likes the comment the engagement i greatly 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 appreciate you all I hope 2023 has been going well for you guys. I know it's been definitely a roller coaster. We've been here, we've been there, we've been up, we've been down. But hey, that is the journey, baby, okay? So again, thank you all uh, for those of you all who are here, who have been here since the beginning. We are continuing to go up on the other side, baby, okay? So today we are talking about the full moon that we have in the sign of Scorpio approaching on May 5th. Okay, now we're going to talk about the sign of Scorpio. Okay, the full moon. Now, this full moon is actually known as a flower moon. Okay, and this full moon is actually a lunar eclipse. Okay, or you can say that this lunar eclipse is a full moon because lunar eclipse do um, signify a full moon. Okay, just like the solar eclipse signify a new moon. Okay, even though solar refers to the sun. You can go do your research on that, okay, if you want more insight into that. Now, I want to talk first about the 5-5 five, five portal, okay, and then we're going to segue into the full moon and the sign of Scorpio, okay? We're going to talk about it through the signs, all that good stuff. And then you're like, oh my God, we just had a full moon. Yes, we did. That was in the sign of Libra, though. <laughs> the sign of the relationships and partnerships and contracts and justice and peace and all that good stuff. And I know a lot of people really felt that full moon. Okay, so I know you guys are feeling this full moon approaching. Remember, you can feel the energies of our full moons and our new moons and our big astrological transits, okay? Weeks up to okay, weeks before they even happen, and you will still feel them after they have happened. Okay, it's an energy thing. Remember, it depends on your frequency, how tapped in you are, all that good stuff. Now, five five. What is number five about in numerology or about angel numbers? Okay, fives are about our changes. Okay, now remember, I tell you guys. When you see the fives, five, 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 oh, five, five, one, five, five, zero, zero, five, zero, zero, five, five, fifty, five, hundred. Okay, five, one, 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 five. No matter how you're seeing it, listen. Yes, it is telling you changes are coming, changes are here, it's signifying changes, it's letting you know to take action though for those changes to come in. Okay, you can't just be like, oh, change is here, but you're not actively doing anything, right? Okay, you have to put in that. So with May 5th also being the day that we have our full moon release, okay? And 5 is about changes. Full moons are about releasing, letting go, clearing out the energy, okay? Purging, really like <laughs> shoveling, you know what I'm saying? What, is, what does he call that? The shoveling the damn ground or whatever. Really like digging out that dirt, okay? Going into your subconscious, okay? Your conscious, get, getting that energy, getting that shit out of there, Okay? So five five, that's gonna it's gonna be really really key for that. That's also gonna be a great day, you know, to simply um, go towards any changes that you've been wanting to make within yourself right now. Okay, remember we are still in Mercury retrograde, so it is not advised to be starting any major projects or surgeries or getting anything done like that right now. But you know, take the time to review and write and you know, just sit with yourself and see where can you make the necessary changes within yourself that will make you feel, you know, better internally, you know, bring more in that internal peace. Okay, remember what you learned from the full moon and Libra and still apply that energy to this full moon in Scorpio. Okay, now let's go ahead and dive into the full moon in Scorpio. Okay, I've already said what, what the full moon is about. Okay, now this full moon happening in the sign of Scorpio. Okay, what is Scorpio? Scorpio is the sign of transformation, rebirth, death, shared resources, debt, taxes. Okay, that's shared resources, other people's money. Okay. Uh, Scorpio is a possessive sign. Scorpios are ruled by planet Mars and Pluto. Not just one planet. That's why Scorpios, they, they a bit more, you know, yeah, because they got two rulers, baby. They got Mars and Scorpio as their ruler, okay? Mars is your action planet. Remember I told you, action, take action for these changes. Makes sense, right? You see how that's all connecting? 
Mars is also your sex drive. Scorpio rules sex. Scorpio rules the genitals. That's the body part that Scorpio rules, okay? Scorpio is also the sign of, did I say rebirth already? I believe I said rebirth already, but if I did not, it's rebirth, okay? So remembering, now Scorpio can also be a very obsessive sign as well because remember Scorpio, when they hold on, they hold on. They hold on until something really allows them to let go and release, okay? Kind of much like the sign of cancer as well. But theirs is a bit more, you know, like tighter because they have, yeah, some of most, because they have, they have that Martian energy and that Pluto energy in there. Pluto, you know, is a planet of control. He wants to, Pluto is, Pluto being the planet of transformation, destruction, you might as well say Pluto is the planet of control, okay? And being that he rules the sign of Scorpio, okay? Scorpio that that wanted to be in control is a big thing for Scorpios. We baby, you're only in a so much control in this in this universe, okay? Ultimately the divine, okay, is in the ultimate control. Okay? Now, what is this full moon in Scorpio asking you to do? Well, it's asking you this is the, this full moon in Scorpio is about a huge emotional release, okay? Number 5, the number 5 is also the number for the sign of Leo, okay? Leo rules the heart. So back to the emotions, okay? Back to the heart chakra, back to the center, okay? You can make so many different connections in astrology and spirituality. Like, it's it's, it's, it's truly all connected, y'all, for real. Now, Scorpio is a fixed sign. The fixed signs are the signs of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, okay? So that's two, five, eight and 11 that's the order of those zodiac signs from 1 through 12 okay in the houses that they rule over fixed signs okay that is your modality or your quadruplicity your modality of being fixed means that you take a long time to change you're very stubborn to changes it takes baby fixed signs oh my god <laughs> it, it, it it feels like forever like eons for somebody like for fixed signs to finally change because they are really 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 stubborn air stubborn okay it's it baby it takes them some time okay so with this full moon being in the sign of scorpio and scorpio being a fixed sign you may feel a little bit of resistance okay to express yourself to get your emotional but you have to the universe is giving you a, a actual a push to actually do it like you don't have a choice anymore at this point you're having to get those emotions out and express yourself and remember i said you could be already doing these things leading up to the full moon okay you could already be finding yourself doing a lot of crying a lot of purging okay a lot of releasing journaling shadow work and you're wondering like why am i so emotional why am i feeling like this why you're feeling the full moon baby what you thought what you thought this full moon in scorpio may 5th 2023 and if you know about scorpio energy scorpio is not a light energy baby scorpio is not a light energy scorpio is already that mystical sign okay so it, it, it's, it's already get, bringing you in with that magical mysticalness. So yes, trust this transit, trust the process because it is magic that is happening. I'm telling you, the fact that this full moon is happening on 5-5, five, five, that is not a coinky dink. I don't believe in coinky dinkies. Now the full moon is happening at 14 degrees, okay, in the sign of Scorpio, which is a fixed sign. Now, 14 degrees is actually the second deacon for... Taurus, meaning that's the second degree that is ruled by Taurus, okay? The second de two degrees is ruled by Taurus, and then you would have 14 degrees, which would be ruled by Taurus, okay? So any of you who have the personal planets, okay, between the degrees of 10 and 20 degrees, fixed signs, remember your fixed signs is the signs of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, okay? If you have your personal planets, in those degrees or in those fixed signs, okay, that's where you would definitely be seeing the shifts and the changes the most, okay? Now, it's so much that's coming through about this full moon, y'all. It ain't even funny. It's not even funny. Um, you could be seeing a lot of eights right now also leading up to this time. So actually seeing a lot of fives right now leading up to this time. So I know I'm definitely am. Uh, that is signs and messages about this full moon. It definitely, it's, it's talking to you, baby. It's talking to you it's about this lunar eclipse. 
Remember, April showers bring May flowers, as my mother told me the other day. And I thought that was beautiful because this full moon in Scorpio is known as a flower moon. You just can't make this type of stuff up, okay? Um, now, here are some advice, you know, some tips, some, some helpful things that you can do for this full moon, okay, to prepare and um, to help you with the releasing and just the whole process of it all, okay? Because Scorpio is linked to sex, okay, and rebirth and transformation and all that good stuff, I would definitely be listening to, I recommend that you guys uh, listen to some sacral chakra music, okay? You can also do the root because the root is your foundation. The root needs to be right before you can even go up to the sacral. Sacral is the second chakra. But I highly recommend that you guys listen to sacral chakra um, affirmations, sacral chakra frequencies, okay? This is a great time to dance right now, to flow with your body, put on, you know, that music that makes you feel sensual and allows you to really flow, you know, and move yourself because that is, that is you still releasing. That is a form of meditation as well. Of course, you can meditate, go out in the sun, you know, sun gaze, sun bathe. You can do your moon, um, you know, your moon gazing, looking at the moonlight, doing your affirmations under the moon, okay, speaking positivity to yourself or speaking out the things that you wish to release, okay, during this full moon um, that are that is centered around your emotions, especially any emotions that you've really been holding on to. You just holding on to them emotions. Why are you holding on to them? Let them go. Release them, please, because they're going to do some people justice. Release those emotions. It's going to do the other people justice, but it's going to do you justice too because you're finally getting it off. I've always been someone who've told people throughout my life, if you hold in your emotions too long or for a certain amount of time, eventually they will end up being burst and released out on the wrong person or the wrong people or at the wrong time, okay? So it is pivotal that you express your emotions, okay? It's key. Um... Even doing sacral chakra poses, exercises, okay, doing things like, um, there's this thing that you can do where you can hold your feet. I'm just going to show y'all up here like this. You can hold your feet like this, okay, kind of what they call the butterfly, and you'll obviously be more flat on the ground, not in my chair, and you can, you know, just like flap your legs like that, okay, you can bring your legs in slowly to each other or slowly bring them apart to allow any energy to be released, okay, um, standing in that position and allowing, you know, things to be released, you can do that as well, it's a great time to do that, you know, for women to do your yoni baths, um, even for guys, this is a good time to do, it's a great time for our, our masculine and our feminine, okay, to do um, different divine baths for yourself right now okay to help release any built up tension any built up emotions that you have within yourself within your sacral area okay and especially within the genital area because scorpio rules the genitals okay now i'm saying not like that y'all because I'm, I'm having certain points in my head and i'm thinking about it and then they like leave me <laughs> Um, I want to talk about it through the houses. Um, okay, so if you have Scorpio in your first house, this full moon, okay, is you will be going through different changes within your appearance, okay, your personality, that outward stuff, you know, that first impression, okay, but many of you guys definitely will be making changes to your appearance. That's usually what happens a lot. Um, anytime a full moon or new moon is making a transit over the first house, because that first house is the house of self. Okay, this full moon could be asking you, a lot of you guys, if you have Scorpio in the first house, you can be simply going inward, you know, finally meditating, you know, spending time alone, okay, purging, releasing, crying, getting that good stuff out. If you have Scorpio in the second house, okay, this can bring changes to your finances, to your possessions, to your money, your values, okay, you may get a big payout or you may have to spend more money than you'd like to, okay, um, you may have to... Uh, pay a debt, okay, that has also been owed because Taurus and Scorpio are polar opposites of each other, meaning that the opposite sign of Taurus is Scorpio and the opposite sign of Scorpio is Taurus, okay? So for this full moon, you can look at your Taurus house and your Scorpio house. That's what you need to do. Look at your birth chart and look at your solar return chart so you guys can look at your solar return chart also, okay? Look at that and see 
where you have Scorpio at in your birth chart, okay? And in your solar return chart. And then also see where you have your moon at because that will also show you where you can also get insights or where things could be coming to light or coming forth for you, okay? Scorpio in the third house, okay? You can have communication coming through for you, baby. If you have some communication that you've been waiting on, longing for, that definitely could be coming through for you, okay? You could have changes going on with your siblings. Fourth house, if you have Scorpio in the fourth house, okay, changes going on with your mother, okay? Or the different uh, maternal, the different women in your life, okay? Even changes within yourself. Um, you could be finding out about pregnancy, you could be moving your home. You could be transforming your home, making changes to your home, making it more um, enchanting, more spiritual, more musical, not more musical, more mystical, more mysterious, okay? Putting a bit more of your oomph on it. Just caught 1555 on the timer there. Those are those fives again, y'all. If you have, let's about to say five, if you have Scorpio in the fifth house, okay, this could be bringing changes um, with the kids, okay, some of you guys could be giving birth to children, also finding out about pregnancy with this in the fifth house, okay, you could be ending and releasing and letting go of some short-term relationships that have ran their course, okay, it's time to let them go, um, also changes within your creativity, okay, your vitality, your energy, okay, you, begin, you could be getting a big burst of energy, that helps you towards, okay, your pursuits, towards your passions, towards your goals, okay? Um, again, your creativity here is, is being shifted. It's being changed. You'll get a burst of, of definitely good energy to come through for that, okay? Um, I would also pay attention to your heart, okay? Just making sure that you're paying attention to your heart. If you have Scorpio in the fifth house, please express yourself. Please express yourself. It will do you justice. Please do that, okay? You have Scorpio in the sixth house, okay? This is changes uh, within your work dynamic, okay? You could be shifting and making changes to your routines, okay? If you have Scorpio in the sixth house, um, your health also could be changing now. You could be finding better ways to um, eat, okay, better ways to diet. Maybe you're deciding to do uh, meal planning and meal prepping more, things of that nature, okay? That would be Scorpio in that sixth house full moon, okay? Letting go of a gym, finding a new gym to go to, or um, creating a whole new workout routine for yourself. Um, you know, downloading a new app to start, you know, yoga, these transits can bring things that are big and things that are small. It's not always going to be things that are huge that these transits will bring, okay? Because it's as above, so below, and things happen on different scales, whether it's minuscule or big, and again, it's about how you see it, okay? Now, if you have Scorpio in the seventh house, okay, you are releasing relationships. You're letting go of contracts. You're walking away from uh, certain people, certain partnerships, especially jobs, okay? So if you have Scorpio in the seventh house, you were, I applaud you because you're finally moving on. Um, a lot of you guys could actually be getting new opportunities, okay, within career and work and things like that as well. Um, just, again, be mindful of starting any new relationships, any new contract, any new partnerships at this time while we have Mercury in retrograde, okay? Mercury retrograde will end, I believe, on the 14th, if I'm not mistaken, May 14th. So, just hold your horses a little bit longer, y'all. We still have about 13 days uh, for retrograde, okay? And we're actually going into retrograde season because Pluto retrograde starts today, May 1st. Yes, yes, yes. So... Get ready for all the planets and everybody to go in retrograde, y'all. Um, full moon in Scorpio in the seventh house, okay? Some of you guys could be ending a marriage, okay? Letting go of a, a marriage or a long-term relationship that you've been in. Um, if you have Scorpio in the eighth house, okay? You are handling and having to deal with shared resources, okay? With debt, with taxes, okay? Um, also... If you have Scorpio in the 8th house, that means you have Scorpio right at home, okay? Because Scorpio rules that 8th house, okay? So you definitely will be going through a big transformation um, within within your 
money, but other people's money. So this could be you receiving justice, okay? Say, for instance, you have a lawsuit or something that you've been waiting on money for. That could be money. Somebody may owe you money for a project or something that you worked on for them. You could be receiving money finally for that, okay? Um, just, just receiving the finances that you've been meant to receive, okay? Any possessions, any things like that. Receiving... Um, things that you can't see coming because that eighth house is also that house of the mysteries and things hidden as well. So um, you could be finding out, you could be finding out things in your sexual life, okay, or about your genitals or about the area, okay. Some of you guys may be going to the doctors, um, just be doing checkups, okay. That's alignment. That's you following the full moon, okay, or this lunar eclipse that we're having. If you have Scorpio in the ninth house, okay, you're going on a new journey, okay? Some of you guys could be taking trips. I mean, actually, psychedelic trips, okay, with the full moon in Scorpio because Scorpio is the sign of the occult, okay? And then um, we have that ninth house being the house of higher knowledge and travel philosophy wisdom, okay? So some of you guys could be... Um, Finishing school, okay, or starting a new career program, okay, or starting a new school program, going back to school, getting a degree, learning new things, okay, um, teaching the full moon in Scorpio. Some of you guys could, excuse me, some of you guys could really be teaching out here, okay, about higher knowledge, about philosophy, about travel, okay, or transforming the way people are seeing spirituality and astrology and higher knowledge. Big kudos to you guys. You guys are definitely doing your things, okay. Um, releasing religious beliefs, okay, could also be a thing for that full moon in Scorpio in the ninth house, okay. If you have Scorpio in the tenth house, baby, that is the house of public image, social status, okay. Um, you are setting new boundaries for yourself, okay. You're reviewing your limits and where you have been limited at, okay. This could also be you um, deciding to switch professions. Many of you guys could switch your entire professions, okay? Not just changing jobs, but actually switching your professions, okay? Um, some of you guys could be going out to uh, shop, okay, for more professional attire. Um, you could be changing your look out here for the society, how society sees you, okay? So if you're on social media, you could be changing and switching up. Um, the way you're doing things, okay, to the public, for the public, okay, but especially making sure that you're setting your boundaries, standing on your boundaries, okay, and expressing yourself um, about any boundaries or anything that could have made you uncomfortable. That will be a, a really big thing to be doing as well if you have Scorpio in that 10th house. Scorpio in the 10th house, okay, changes also to your reputation. Again, that public image coming in, okay, so you could be getting uh, social recognition, okay, some of you guys could be going viral at this time. Um, Scorpio in the 10th house, full moon, a big healing is taking place for you guys. You guys are helping people heal, you're creating things for people to heal, okay, or starting a new um, project or a new some type of new plan to help other people, okay, with healing or transforming their lives in certain ways, okay? If you have Scorpio in the 11th house, okay, this is changes to your friendships, okay? Releasing certain friendships, releasing certain uh, technological things that you may have, okay? Letting go of one thing, maybe you're getting a new computer, okay? Something like that, simple as for this, um, the full moon happening in, this, in the 11th house or in... Um, that, yeah, if you have, if you have Scorpio in the 11th house, okay, um, changes to your networking, okay, and social groups, okay, so you could have someone reaching out to you that would like to work together, okay, you could have people that are wanting to collaborate with you, okay, or you could be starting new collaborations, um, the way I see this Scorpio being in the 11th house, okay, because the 11th house is the house of the community, okay, aspirations, your dreams, okay, so many of you guys are transforming or going through this new transformation within yourself for towards your dreams and your aspirations, okay, you're seeing your dreams come to life, you may be actively walking through your dreams or walking on your dreams, okay, I love that song, Walking on a Dream, um, just talking about that on Instagram Live the other day, so that, that's a beautiful 
Um, definitely full moon in Scorpio in the 11th house, okay? Friends, 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 transformations with friends, okay? You can be transforming the friendships that you have or making sure that the friendships that you are starting now, okay, they're different from the ones that you had in the past, okay? You're really looking at them and, and seeing and, and reviewing how do you want your friendships to be, okay? What type of value do you want from your friends, okay? Remember, we got Mercury retrograde going on in Taurus. Taurus is the polar opposite of Scorpio, okay? So it's Scorp it's Taurus energy and Scorpio energy for these full moons, okay? Plus the house that it's in. What else do I want to say about this 11th house? Scorpio, if you have Scorpio in the 11th house. Sudden changes, okay? You can experience sudden changes, okay? Uh, changes within your community, okay? There could be um, changes within the home, Okay, because again, the community, if you live, you live in an apartment or anything like that, maybe there's changes going on within your apartment that are being undergone, especially with Pluto going retrograde now in Aquarius. Pluto hasn't made it that far in Aquarius yet because he just moved there um, last month or so. But hey, let's see the door. Um, and then last but not least, Scorpio in the 12th house. Okay, some of you guys could be releasing certain addictions, okay, letting go of um partying and a lot of drinking or the drugs okay so you guys could be letting go of those habits big kudos to you or changing your habits okay shifting those around um going into your subconscious which is definitely what this scorpio full moon is asking us to do okay going down to the depths of your subconscious and really releasing any blockages any emotional baggage any emotional um fears you know that you've been holding on to all that is being cleansed out okay full moon and scorpio 12th house can also bring endings okay within the family okay so like you know people passing away you can find out news about that you know they're sending to the other side um full moon and scorpio 12th house you're learning new spiritual pursuits you could also be going on a new spiritual journey okay are you going through your spiritual awakening hello welcome to the other side baby you did it you did it you did it proud of you all um, Scorpio in the 12th house, okay, going and just going into that psyche, really diving and, you know, going within and uh, seeing where you can transform your thoughts and the way you're looking at certain things, okay, because the 12th house is the house of hidden enemies as well, so you can also have that come to light or being revealed, people who really don't have your best interests at heart, okay, they're, they're being, they're being illuminated, right, it's, it's being shown, okay, um, because this full moon in Scorpio, even though Scorpio rules secrets and mysteries, a lot of times the full moon in Scorpio is actually bringing out things that kind of was already there. It's just shining the light on it now because it's like now is the time for the light to be shined on it, if that makes sense, okay? What else I want to say for the full moon in Scorpio 12th house? Please be mindful of any drinking, okay? Some of you guys could be going to the doctor and finding out... Um, that you may have complications, okay, in a genital region area, much like if you have it in the 8th house, okay? That's also going to be a big key thing. So definitely make sure you're, you're checking on your health, you're going to the doctors, things of that nature, okay? Let's see. And most and most importantly, most, 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 most importantly, remember to be patient with yourself, okay? Uh, full moons and new moons can be tough for a lot of people. Um, because it's 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 a time for release, okay? And the moon represents our emotions. A lot of times people do not want to express their emotions. Um, this full moon is happening on 5-5, five, five, which is actually on Friday, okay? Or Venus Day. And Venus is in Gemini. Venus will move into Cancer. I believe she moves into Cancer on May 7th. So, um that you you it'll be it's it's a lot of that energy coming in okay because we have mars and cancer which is asking you to express yourself you have mercury and taurus taurus rules the throat throat chakra so that's definitely asking you to express yourself okay just call 2822 on the timer it can be a number that someone is seeing um and then with venus being in the sign of gemini gemini is the sign of communication and then venus getting ready to almost be in cancer that energy kind of pulling it's a lot so we're we're getting gemini and we're getting um cancer energy and you're getting that scorpio energy and taurus energy so we're we're really being asked here to speak and express to speak and express and release okay remember crying expressing yourself purging all that is not a form of weakness it's a form of strength so anybody that tell you you're weak for crying and you you can give them the middle finger up and tell them to grow up okay so 
this is what I have for you guys for the full moon, lunar eclipse, flower moon in the sign of Scorpio happening on 5-5, five, five, okay? If you're interested in a more personal astrology reading or full moon in Scorpio reading, go ahead and book the intuitive natal chart reading on my website, okay? It will be in the description box below or you can book, um, you know, general reading, love reading if you guys would like that. But um, actually looking at your chart, okay, and knowing your chart is key. That's essential because you'll understand your day-to-day -day life a lot better. You'll understand what's happening, what's not happening, what's coming in, all that good stuff, okay? So um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about yourself and what this full moon has in store for you, go ahead and check out that link to my website, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to like, share, and comment with your favorite astrology friends, okay? Love and light to you all. Have a beautiful day. Happy New Month.